Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, we will take a look at the new header modern control for Canvas Power Apps. This control responds to modern themes, supports dynamic responsiveness, supports a logo, page title, displays the user's profile picture, and more. So let's check it out in action. The modern header control is a fundamental control that lets you design a standard header experience for your app screens. This control responds to modern themes and is dynamically responsive. This control supports a logo, a title for the screen and displays the current logged in user's image. To add this control to a screen, I'll simply head over to insert and from modern controls, pick the new modern header control experience. The moment this control drops on the screen, the width is automatically adjusting to the width of my screen. And that is because by default, the width property for this control is set to parent dot width. If we explore the properties for the modern header control, the first property is the theme style. Currently, it's set to the primary color of our modern theme. So as I change the theme for the app, automatically the header control color starts changing. We can also select a light theme style, which puts a lighter shade of that specific theme color, or we can select neutral. I'll select primary. We have the visible property, so we can show and hide this control. The title property. By default, it is set to app.activescreen.name, meaning it will pick the current screen name on which this control has been added. If I add another screen and I have renamed this to task screen, if I insert the modern header control here, we can see the title for the header. Then there is a visible property for the title control as well. The property is called is title visible. If I turn this off, the title is not displayed in the header. If I turn it on, it shows the title. Title font size. This has been a top ask for modern controls. Logo. By default, an empty image is displayed. That's the logo. We can upload images to our Power App. In my case, I have an image called MSFT. And if I would like to show that in the logo section of the header, I can simply pick my image. I can decide if I would like to show the logo experience or not in the header. And there is also a property called tooltip for the logo. I have updated the tooltip. So if I hover over the logo, we can see the tooltip in action. And finally, we have profile picture, which shows the current logged in user's image. I can turn it off so it will hide the user's profile picture. If I turn it on, it will display it. Additionally, if I hover over it, it will show the display name of the user and it is clickable. If I select it, it gives me details about the user. Two properties are displayed, the display name and the email address. If I was to preview my app, we can test the responsiveness of the header control in action. Currently, I'm viewing it on my desktop experience. Let's change this to a tablet experience. Device held horizontally, vertically. Here, I'm going to a phone 
layout experience. This is a screen in which I directly added the header control. If I was to add a screen that uses the responsive layout controls, I'll pick header and footer as the layout template here. In the header container, I will go and insert the header control. Here as well, if I preview the app, the header control is fully responsive. The controls title property by default is set to app.activescreen.name. This is something that we can change. I will call it task management app. If I was to preview and view this on a mobile experience, you can see how if there is not enough real estate, it places three ellipses next to the title. The title font size by default is set to 20. And this is something that we can change. Now, how about changing this dynamically depending upon the size of the screen? I can add a switch condition to check the size of my screen. My screen is called screen two in this case. So screen two dot size. If the screen size is one, meaning mobile device held vertically, the font size that I would like to set in this scenario, let's say is 14. Else for all other scenarios, I would like to keep the font size 20. This time, if I preview on a mobile device held vertically, that screen size one, the font size has changed to 14. But if I was to view this app, let's say on a tablet experience or on my window size, you can see how the font size changes. If we head over to advanced properties for the header control, for the profile picture, we actually have three other properties that are leveraged to display information about the logged in user. There is a property called user image that shows the current logged in user's image. Now this expects a data type of image. So even if I was to provide the image that I have loaded in the media in my app, it will display that. Username, for example, Microsoft. And in place of user email, I can give some additional information. Here I'll put some text that talks about the header control. So now you can see how that user profile scenario has changed. It shows my image. I select this. It shows the two text properties, Microsoft, and then the text that I entered. Bear in mind, the header control doesn't automatically replicate across all your app screens. It needs to be done manually to each screen. Meaning if I was to add a new screen and go and insert the header control, you will note that the configuration of this header control is the default setting. It won't directly replicate what I have before, unless I go and copy this control C, go to my new screen and paste it control V. This control also has a property called base palette color. By default, this is empty, meaning the style property will follow the theme of our app. However, if I was to change the base color, now the header control will not follow the theme color. So we have the option here to define a different color specifically for our header control. To revert to the theme color, all we have to do is ensure that the base palette color property is empty. Now it will start respecting the color of the theme. Now for this app, if we focus on the header experience, I have a header container in which 
I added a label control. I then added an image control that displays the current user's image. And I've done something similar for the form screen as well, wherein I have this header section, displays the title, the image. I also have a back icon. Now let's try and use the new modern header control in this app. So for my home screen, in the header container, I will go and remove both of these controls. Notice this header container has a property called fill. I'm pointing this to app.theme.colors.primary, meaning whatever is the primary color of the selected theme of my Power App. If this was a brand new container, this property would be as follows. So let's select this header container and go and insert the modern header control. For this control, the height I would like to set as parent dot height. So it takes the height set for my header container. I'll go ahead and display a logo for this app. I already have some images uploaded. The title by default is taking my screen name. I will change this to issue tracker app. So you can see with one simple modern header control, I get a fully responsive header experience for my power app. Let's go to our form screen. For the header section, I have the title, the image, which are basic properties in my modern header control. But currently, I do not have an option to add icons or have a clickable logo or an image. So let's see how we can do that. I'll simply go and delete all the controls in this container. For my container, the fill property, I'm going to respect the modern theme of my power app by using the following formula. In this, I will go and insert my header control. The height for this, I'll set it to parent dot height. In this case, I do not want to show a logo. I want to add an actionable icon. To do that, for my container, I will go and insert an icon called back arrow. Now, when I added this, if you notice, it went outside of the dimensions of this header section. And the reason is because the header control has a property called width that by design is parent dot width. For the header control, the first thing I will do is set flexible width to on and then minimum width, which is set to parent dot width. I will change this to a minimum width that I would like to set for this control. And I'll set this as 500. So notice now I have the header and I have that icon. The icon control, I will reorder and move it to the left since I want the back icon to be positioned first. I'll set its height. I'll align this in the center. I'll change its color and on select of this, I would like to navigate the user to my home screen. So if I preview the app, this is a modern header control that is fully responsive. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for watching.